So nice to see everybody. Again, Tristan's not here. She's taking that off recovery care. So go ahead, have a seat, cross your shin bones. Flex your feet, push your foot down into the floor so your thighs flex and lift a little bit. So your hips have to drop into the bolster. Lean back to help this happen. So you feel your body weight, push your padding of the floor or your bolster down. Don't lean your weight forward into your feet or legs. Place your hands on your thighs, lift your spine up. Drop the shoulders. But when you drop the shoulders, do not narrow the back side, but widen the front side instead. So if I widen from center line out to tip of shoulder, I'm trying to broaden the bottom side of my collarbone from center out. If I narrow the back side, it pushes it forward and it gives the illusion of what width, but it's all width of the mid. You want to create width of the upper. So keep that width, press your hands down again, take a nice deep breath. And when you breathe in, breathe wide like you move your shoulders. Let your breath come from the bottom up, out. To reinforce that, the breath reinforce the openness. Exhale, let the head lift and be neutral. The eyes close and maintain the lift of the body and the width of the body. And as you continue with your eyes closed here to find lift and width in the body, don't just make it about the part that feels the most intensity. Remember, as I've talked about in prior classes, a big part of the yoga practice is to work, and I hate to use the word control, but to guide our senses away from the external things to more the internal. So as you use your sense of touch on the body, what is lifting and widening? Is the whole spine lifting, including your neck? Is your back and your front widening? So you're not squeezing the muscles towards your spine to push you forward, but you're leaning your body weight back so they have to be stable, but wide. Can you let there be a little bit more space in between your fingers? Even if you're not flexing or stretching them, but can you let your body relax into a little bit more width in parts that you might tend to grip? Use your senses for a moment to connect to your practice in the sense that it is about applying the practice across the whole body. And we train our senses so we know what to apply to what part. Because yoga is a whole body practice. And while one yoga, a yoga pose does not necessarily focus on one part of the body over the other, because it is whole body practice, what thing the pose applies to the body is what we have to gain mastery of, a sharpness of. So use your senses, my friends, in class, your sight, sound. What noises does your body make? How does your body feel? What goes on in the salivary glands? And what, where your body is in these poses. So as you're trying to create stability or happy, or strong, or whatever thing you've come to yoga to get. When you go through the poses, not only are you learning the physical changes that it creates, but the mental emotional too. And then you learn how to apply things to the body and things to the self surgically, just as you're widening the chest with effort, you widen the fingers with passiveness. You make space. Both are making space, but two very different ways. Yoga does this throughout our practice. And so today, as we go through the poses, I might point out some ways that this could be true. So you learn that even though you might learn how to oppose, to oppose correctly, is it the correct thing for what you're trying to create in parts of you or all of you? Not all of you needs to be flexed. Not all of you needs to be relaxed, maybe at the same time. Maybe you need a combination of both. My hands have to relax. 
but my back has to work. The duality of us and the practice. Take a breath in, we'll um shortly three times. Oh. Bring your hands together to your chest if you haven't already. Oh. Oh. Bow your head and salute the essence of yoga inside yourself. <laughs> Bring your hands into your lap, let your head rise and your eyes open. So nice to see everybody. So <clears throat> go ahead and grab a strap and a yoga block and lay on your back. We're going to kind of touch base with what we worked on where we started Tuesday, continue working on Tuesday, what we did, Patagon Stasana and learning how to flex and extend and fold the spine in the body. And also extend other limbs at the same time we extend the spine. So lay flat on your back and you're gonna take your block flat under your right thigh and hamstring, right up near your thut. So the block will be flat across the thigh muscle, thigh bone on the right side. So you're not, your, your hips are not up on the block like bridge pose. The, your hips are on the floor, then there's the block and your leg laying on top of that. So under the right leg, press the right thigh down into the block and pick your left leg up as high as you can on its own strength, straighten the leg. Woo. Now notice how your right thigh again wants to react. It might want to lift up. Notice where you start wanting to push down from, especially in the first couple of times. Are you pushing your low back down? Are you trying to lift your hips up? Be aware of the strength of the front of the thigh as it learns to descend down into the block. Pay particular attention which half of the thigh, the inner or outer thigh. Then. Take your strap, lasso your left foot that's in the air. Keep pushing your right thigh into the block and then pull the leg a little closer to your body. So supta patagonstasana, but instead of pushing your thigh into the floor like you've heard in my class or many other teachers, what you're getting is, is the thigh depressing into the block. You get a chance to feel like what the muscle inflection of the leg is like and the difference it makes in the lifted leg. So, as I said earlier, where you flex to stretch open the chest in your upright seated pose, but you relax to create width and space in your fingers, that kind of dual duality thinking has to happen here. Your right thigh is pressing down, but your left leg is flexed, but it's lifting up. Parts moving opposite, as, we, as I've talked about in prior class. So continue to press your right thigh down, bend your elbows wide, pulling on the strap a little bit, and engage the leg to a, a more active stretch. Pay attention to the muscles of your left leg and your right leg, if your left leg is even working. Now try, as you've pulled the strap closer, stretching the hamstring, let go of the yoga strap and try to hold the left leg up in the air at the same height without the yoga strap. Can you do it on the strength of both legs? And look how much deeper that bend is at the hip. There's an action that happens when we work the lower leg, the right leg, the left leg can learn to hinge deeper at the hip. So now keep that strong left leg that you've got. Keep the strong right leg you've got. Now pull on the strap to increase your left leg stretch. Don't lose the action of either leg. But now that your hamstring's at its max, your back muscles have to move instead. So when you pull on that left hamstring, point your foot, and then think about the sit bone on the left side lifting with the hamstring slightly almost like your left hip was going to the bottom of your left glute was glute was going to lift in the air do not try to push your pelvis flat in the floor good there should be a broadening action that create that happens at the bottom side of the hip the more you work the right leg the more this broadening action happens because the core is keeping your back from doing overdoing the work Go ahead, take your left leg out to the left side, opening up the groin hip, keeping the right thigh, the right thigh pushing down into the block.
That's 10. Yes, right. Uh, if I press my right thigh into the block, uh -huh. and my heel is coming up. That's OK. That's OK? That's OK. Your lifted, I'll mute you, Chaya. Your lifted leg, or the, the, the leg that's on the floor, the heel comes up because you're straightening the leg. And that's all right, because you're just lengthening that, the, the knee while you're lengthening your hamstring. So let right leg presses into the block, whether your heel comes off the floor or not, that's OK. Let's take your left leg out to the left, stretching the thigh inner groin in Patagon Stassen. Work your right thigh, pull on the strap just a little more, get into the stretch of your leg, and then let go of the strap so you feel the hamstring thigh have to work. Point your left foot. Think about how you can not just hold your left leg at the current action, but stretch the left leg away from the body. You're pointing the foot, you're stretching the top of the leg through the shin, the toes, so the foot points, but you're still flexing or extending the backside of the leg also. All right, push that right thigh any degree more, open up your left thigh hip on its own power, and then grab the strap, keep the flexed left thigh, try not to lose that stabilizing force of the muscle helping learn, uh, learning to move while being flexed. That creates a lot more graceful movement and stability in your poses. That's why we can do the standing version of this without falling as much. As much, we'll still fall a lot. Stretch any degree more by bending the left elbow, pulling the leg towards you. But experiment a little bit like what over pulling on the left leg is like and how your right leg might lose the pressure in the block. Because some of you know from Tuesday what comes later. So you got to warm that thigh muscle and hamstring up. Go ahead, bring the leg up to the air. Go ahead and take your left leg all the way across to the right side, rolling into the full twist. So you roll onto the block with your outer right thigh. This might feel tender on the outer uh, IT band or parts of the thigh muscle. So it's okay to use a bolster or a blanket on the block or a softer block if you have such a thing. Push your thigh down. So your right hip lifts up off the floor as you twist the left leg across to the right side. So it's a twist. It's the full left leg has crossed all the way to the right side of the body. You're rolled onto the right hip and then push that right thigh down. So the outer thigh, inner thigh muscles get very strong in that rotation. The, the right leg has to push into the block, the outer side of the thigh. And it's not comfortable if the block's near your knee a lot of times. So be aware of that, that if you push the outer knee into this block, it can be uncomfortable. That's why I uh, tell people to pad the thing. <laughs> Try and straighten your right leg, Suzette, and now push your thigh bone down and literally lift your hip up off the floor. <laughs> you might've missed that class and that was a fun one. <laughs> There you go, see that. Now push that thigh down best you can. Woo. Leg up, go ahead and take the block under the left leg, other side. Push the left thigh bone down into the block. Go ahead, pick your right leg up on its own strength. Test, see what your range of motion is. See, see how much easier it is to pick the leg up with or without the thigh, if you like, as in the, the thigh pushing into the block. It's the tendency to want to lift our legs from our low back strength is what we're trying to change with this. But go ahead, hook your strap around the foot, pull the thigh into the stretch. Once you've pulled the thigh a little deeper into the stretch, work your left thigh a little more, but, and then try to go ahead, let go of the strap with the hand so, you, with the, so your right leg has to try and hold better. It has to learn to extend and flex on its own power up against gravity right now, at least in this way. When we stand and pick the leg up, it becomes very different. All right, go ahead and grab the strap, draw it in a little more, enjoy your stretch of your leg.
Go ahead and take your right leg out to the left side. I'm sorry, to the right side, I apologize. Open the groin first. Push the left side down as you extend the leg and then let go of the straps or try to pull the leg into a stretch and then let go of the strap so you get the flexion of that thigh muscle. You start to train the muscles on their own to be strong and extended without being always manipulated or moved into a stretch by your arms. Go ahead, grab a hold of the strap, pull it a little, pull on it a little more, trying to maintain that flexion of muscle in the leg. Bring the leg up now, take your right leg across to the left, rolling into the full twist with the block under your thigh. It will feel awkward, but you have to kind of stiffen the left, stiffen the lower leg as you cross the right leg over. So you roll onto that outer thigh and then can push down through that thigh to pick the hip up a little bit. Do a few deep breaths, continuing to work the bottom leg just as much as you're working the right leg. Push the right foot into the strap, extend that right leg, and then pull with your arm to stretch it. We're not going to let go of the strap in this, but I want you to work on the bottom leg more, what it takes to flex the thigh to lift the hip up. Because there's, if there's a challenge in lifting the hip, that shows that the inner thigh muscle so as is not working properly. You might end up overly tight and unable to move or to engage the leg properly. Bring the leg up, take the block out, take the strap off, stand on up. Let's work on Patagon Stasana for a moment. So find a wall space and a block to start, have a yoga strap and chair nearby. If you have a yoga chair or a dining room table chair or anything like that'll work for you to be able to put your foot up on when we go to the hard, hard part. So now chair strap block will be the thing you need for, in, 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 for the current next sequence of stuff. I want you to stand with your back against the wall, hips and back to the wall. Feet are just a couple inches away from the wall. Legs are straight. So it's like Tadasana at a slight lean. Take your block, place it behind your right hamstring, just below the buttock, not behind. So it's not between the, it's not between your glutes and the wall, but it's, it's the length of your, your right hamstring. So it feels like it's a shelf your right glute is laying on. And then you hold it there. And then we're gonna start with what we started with yesterday. Everyone stretch your arms up the wall, touching your thumbs to the wall above your head. So you create extension of the spine. Urva Hastasana, work your right leg. Pick your left knee up higher than your hip if you can. Try not to fall. <laughs> so that if your right foot is against the wall, move it away a couple inches. The feet start a couple inches from the wall. If your heel is against the wall, this will be impossible. The block is gonna push you over. There you go. Now notice how your body is leaning. The knee is bent, Shuba, don't just pick the left leg up. Just pick the left knee up into the air, high as you can. There you go, friend. You're, you're working way too hard. <laughs> so now, as your left knee lifts higher, notice does your body lean or tilt one way? And can you 
what does it take to make your right leg lift you up and then stretch each side of your ribs as long while holding that block in place? How does the right thigh have to move into the block through the heel and also lift the hamstring? There's four different actions happening in that one leg. So can you focus on pushing through the right heel, suck the right hip under your body while still maintaining that block to the wall and then lift your spine up? Try to pick up your left knee slightly higher than your hip, so you have to work that quad. Feel the challenge there. Notice your balance is pretty good. That's nice. <laughs> if your back and hips come off the wall and you could somehow hold the block, you'd probably be very steady. All right, bring the legs down, bring the arms down. Bend your left knee, pick the knee up to the chest, grab a hold, keep the block under behind your right thigh. Nothing has changed there. Pick the left knee up, take a hold of your left foot in your hands, and pull your left foot towards your right hip. So you're picking the knee up, and then you're pulling the shin bone across into a hip open. Now, do not drop the left knee down to the floor. Keep lifting the left knee as high as your hip. So pull that foot up. There you go, Shub. It's like doing pigeon pose, but standing. Now work the right leg. Can you push the inner right thigh into the block equal to the outer left? or the outer right thigh. So you got to experiment with how you can internally rotate that standing leg thigh. If you've had much work with an Iyengar teacher, one of the first things you hear is turn, rotate your thighs in, in Tadasana. So the upper thigh, right where your block is, has to learn to twist inward and push back into that block. This is what makes the base pelvis muscles lift the spine. This is why this is so hard for some of us. Don't let your left knee stretch to the floor. Keep lifting your left knee up to the height of your hip. If you want more stretch, you keep pulling that left foot higher up your right hip. Yeah, there you go. Now, if I was a cruel teacher, I would say you have to fold forward and touch your hands to the floor. I'm not a cruel teacher, and I don't expect anyone to do that, but that's later. Right? Now, let's just test to see what happens partway through. Left hand grabs left big toe. <laughs> Keep your back to the wall for balance. Push your right thigh into the block. Push your foot out against your hand and stretch your leg straight out in front of you without dropping the block. <laughs> Just try, see what happens. You only can learn. Good, stretch your left leg out in front of you, Shuba, with your hand holding the toe. Hand holding the toe, dear. Left hand holds the toe, stretch it out. Woo, good job, everyone in, good. All right, leg down. It's not easy to hold that block. That right hamstring, when I do it, just cramps on me a lot because that right hamstring is having to hold my body up more than my back. Let's do the other side, block behind your left thigh. I'm sure Tristan is very pleased she's missing this. She planned to get the shot so she could skip a day. Block behind your thigh, left thigh, pick your right knee up in front of your body as high as you can, stretching both arms up, thumbs to the wall. Any degree more that you can experiment with rotating your inner left thigh into the block, pulling the hip under you, and then lifting your spine and leg up taller. Because if you push your foot into the floor from your hip down, you end up twisting. Think about your hip thighs lifting or the calf pushing the heel down, but your thigh muscle moving back and up. Very nice, Shuba. Good balance on this side. Katie, you're not on camera, but I tell you you're doing good. Thank you, Pratima, for modifying for your leg. Still pushing the block, you know. You're doing good. All right, bring the arms down, leg down for a moment. 
Make sure your block's still in place behind the thigh. Pick your right foot up towards your left hip, grabbing a hold of it, pulling the foot across to the hip with the hands. And the more you pick that foot up, the more hip you stretch. stretch. Standing poses are very tough. They ask an immense amount of work of our body. But we stand all the time, but how much do we actually lift up against gravity or create that width and the extension of the spine? A lot of Patagonstasana, I think, there's a lot of really useful stuff in this pose to challenge balance and strength and endurance, range of motion of our hamstring. So just keep pulling up the hip, find that lift. Take the right index middle finger, hook the right big toe with your right hand. Chest nice and lifted, the arm will stretch out long. Push the foot out, measure the strength of your right leg to extend outward, pulling on that head just as best you can forward. If you lose the block, you lose the block, but try to hold it. Woo! Working hard. I will say this, all of you are doing better with this pose than I ever did in the beginning. <laughs> Good mastery. See, Chaya is smart. She just puts a chair in front of her and puts her foot on it. All right, everyone leg down. Everyone get your own chair if Chaya is gonna do it. <laughs> put your chair in front of you with the seat of the chair facing away from you. That's so you can put your calf, or you're not your calf, your Achilles tendon on the higher part of the chair, the back bar. No, no, Chai, you keep your stool, that's fine. Make sure the chair is a couple feet away from you because you want your heel or Achilles tendon on the bar of your chair. I would put a blanket across the back of it unless you're like me and like things to hurt. <laughs> but take your block, place it behind your right thigh, keep it there. And now put, and then when you're ready, Take your left knee up in front of you and try to put your left foot up on the chair, leg straight. With the block right behind your thigh. So back to the wall, block. So Pratima, put your back to the wall again here. There you go. Very nice. Good. Now hold the, hold the block behind the thigh. Stretch forward and grab the top of the chair with both hands. Woo. There, there is a challenge to the hamstrings. <laughs> Point your left foot. Thank you. That is the top side of your leg stretching. You also have to stretch the heel and the hamstring slightly into this too. So as you point your foot, push your heel push through your heel like there was a section of wall or something on the heel to push into and pull your toes back. We've talked about this in class, it's called the Barbie foot, right? Foot is pointed, toes are flexed. Because you want the leg to extend and flex like both sides, the top and bottom are moving, uh, uh, are trying to lengthen the legs. Both muscular actions are trying to lengthen each side of the leg. That does not mean you push the hip forward, but can you flex your thigh to push your bone to the hamstring? Can you point the foot so your calf flexes to lengthen the top of the foot? And then you let the hamstring work here. Eventually, this form of the pose, you are folded very deeply forward, holding your body up with your arms wrapped around the foot. That's later, don't worry about it now. But if you wanna practice your balance, try taking both hands and grab the foot and push your foot against your hand, like your toes were pushing your hands out away from you. That is the next step of balancing it. Now, lift your spine, your body back up, take both arms all the way up, thumbs to the wall.
Notice that your hips want to lean or tilt. Keep the right hip under you. Push the right thigh into the wall or into the block. Identify your own left side of your body. The left hand is facing into the wall. If the thumb is touching the wall, turn your palm out so the back of the hand touches the wall. And then turn your pinky to the wall and try to take your palm to the wall. So it's going from inside, forward, out. And then try to climb your hand higher. So your right ribs, right side, stretch your right hand out towards your toe and stretch your left hand higher up the wall into a twist. Ooh. So does that right hand reach for your toe? Left hand goes up the wall higher. There you go. Nice way to get rotational into this pose. Work that right thigh. Take a few more seconds. Untwist, take both arms up. Now, before your legs are so tired, you have to come out. I know we're past tired, right? For a moment, flex your left thigh, keep your arms on the wall, keep the block. Try to lift your left heel up any degree. See what muscles it will take to learn to lift that leg. Woo! All right, good. I like the hopping. I like the blocks falling. It's good. Experiment, experimenting matters. All right, legs down. Switch legs. You all right, Suzette? I have really been struggling with the left leg. I'm having a lot of hip problems in it. So we'll see how it goes. Right leg okay. is working. <laughs> so remember, remember how this goes. You. Anytime I teach something in this stage is whatever stage you hit that's your max, it's okay to stay there. Yeah. So <laughs> don't push yourself. This anyway, is a lot of hip work. Yes. Good. I just want to make sure you're okay. So you're working it. All right. Leg up in the chair. Get that right leg up there. Point that foot. Woo. Those hammies. Those hip muscles. For those of you who are like, why is this so hard? It's because we don't practice it enough. So we are practicing it more. Reach forward, grab the top of the chair with both hands while keeping the block on the wall. The more stretch you want, the, further, the more you bend your elbows, letting your upper torso come to your thigh. Remember, as I said before, at the start of class, take your time, turn your senses on yourselves. If your eyes are closed, you can't use them to see what your body is doing. If your mind wanders, you're not paying attention to the sounds and the feelings of your whole body, just to the pain that you're in or the stress you're in that's making you want to run away from it. Let, try for just a moment to keep all parts of yourself focused on your physical self so they get more aware and tune or stronger with what's going on with them. Good. Bring the body up, arms up. Reach as high as you can on the wall. 
push your thigh into that block, make that left leg do the greater work. Turn your right palm to the wall. Left hand reaches for right big toe, twist. Rolling your right ribs towards the wall, the left ribs away from it. Don't drop your block. I don't know. My dog is very upset he hasn't been on camera yet. After class, buddy, after class. Try to keep sliding that right hand up any degree you can, stretching through that right side body. <laughs> Sorry, stretching through the right side body. Then don't close your eyes, don't check out, stay checked in. All right, come on down. I know, I could have asked you to pick your leg up off the chair, I could, but we're not. Grab your yoga strap and your block. You can go ahead and put the chair away for right now. All right, with your back to the wall, block between your thigh and the wall, but let's, let's add to it. So instead of your whole back touching the wall and the block flat, Turn the block on edge sticking out from the wall so you cannot touch your hips or back to the wall. So you kind of walk forward to about you know, four inches. So your block will not be flat like this, but on edge. So there's this whole length of it between your glutes and the wall. So the narrow edge will be pressing right, your thigh will be pressing into this narrow edge. So you, your feet need to be right under your hips. So now you can't you can lean against the wall. You'll be able to catch yourself, but you don't get the full support of it. Take the strap around your left foot. Take your left foot up, loop, loop it around, and pull up by bending yes, the where elbow. Is, yes. Where does the block go? Behind your right thigh. Hold on. Okay. okay. But fine. Block is block is wide. <clears throat> Thank you, Shuba. Thank you for asking, clarifying. Good students know that no matter how much the teacher is pontificating or yammering, they need to be interrupted for good question. <laughs> Pick your so block is behind your right thigh, just below the glute wide. Pick your left knee up as high as you can. Take the strap around your left foot. Climb your hands down that rope close to the foot. So your knee is bent and your elbows are slightly bent. So you're kind of in a just, you're the only straight limb you've got your standing leg. Good, work your thigh into that block. Lift your spine up, keep your elbows very deeply bent and pulled out. Now push your leg against that strap and make the pose not about lifting the leg up. Your arms pull the leg up by pulling back. Push your leg against that strap and make the leg about extension as much as you can. Don't worry if you can't go straight. I would rather you hold the pose and keep your block than flip out and fall. <laughs> Notice how your left leg will sometimes want to go out to your left. Draw it back to center. Woo. And that standing leg gets to scream a lot. There you go, Shuba, good. Good with the arms, good with the leg. You got to try to pull on that rope. <laughs> Flip yourself over, yeah, that's, that's the plan. 
Good. Ready for the hard part and the fun part? Hold the strap only with your left hand. Open your left leg to the right without dropping the block. Good luck. <laughs> It's, a, it's hard. It's a whole different set of balance. Nice, Shuba. Good job. Good, Micah. Much harder than laying on the floor, right? <laughs> Lay on the floor, the leg just goes. All right. Bring the leg down. That was fun. Let's do the other leg. Move the block behind your left thigh. Pick up the right foot, put the strap around the right foot. Climb the hands close to it by pulling that, that foot up higher. Bend the elbows, hold them out. And then try pushing that leg against it. So the leg's not trying to lift itself, the leg is trying to extend. Your arms are doing the retracting lift right now. Straighten the right leg any degree. Point those right foot, point those right toes. Point that right foot. Make the top and back of the leg work. Shake like a leaf in the wind. It's okay. Right. Here's the fun part. Try to hold, hold the work. Stay with it. Swing the right leg to the right any degree. And even though you may tilt, which is normal, lift your spine long while tilting. It's okay, Shuba. Use that use that wall edge. It's okay. Good good prop use. Come on, Chai, pick that leg up. I know you there you go. <laughs> good, good double strap use there, Micah. Pulling up like that. Nice, everybody. Leg down. Which legs again, we got time. So block behind your right thigh, please. Come for the whole shebang now. All three poses, up, twist, and then out to the side. So strap a block behind your right thigh, strap around your left foot, pick, the, pick up arms really close to the foot on the strap by bending the knee. Elbows out so your back and chest are wide and lifted. And then push the foot out against the strap, stretching it out any degree. Doesn't have to even go perfectly straight, but point the foot. Lengthen everything from the top of your hip through the foot. There you go. Even the toes stretch. Stretch it all. All right, here we go. All right. Right hand holds the strap. Ah, uh, no, no. Right hand, Pratima. Right hand. Twist first. We're twisting. Take your left hand up the wall. Now twist any degree. <laughs> Bend your right elbow slightly and twist. Twist to your left. There we go. Push your thigh into that block. There you go, Pratima. Very good. Bring your left hand down, grab a hold of the strap. Don't drop the leg. Take the leg out to the side. Open up the groin. Try to hold the stand the whole time. Don't drop your block. Don't drop your leg. Even if your leg starts sinking to the ground, don't quit. <laughs> but do what you can to pull with that arm and push with that leg, because it's the leg pushing against the strap, the arm pulling against that creates lift. If your hips are tired, I'm with you. <laughs> Bring your leg center. Bring your leg to the floor. Good job, everyone. Switch sides. <laughs> OK. 
pick that right foot up. Lasso we go. Try to climb your hands closer to your right foot with your knee bent, dear. Bend your right knee, yeah. No, hands closer to the foot, more down the strap. There you go, now straighten it out. Straighten the right leg, don't, don't let your hands slide down the strap, keep your hands close. <laughs> That's all right. There you go, very good, Prachima. Anyone break their block yet? No? I would have to see it on film for it to still count for like the 2022 Italy trip. All right, keep your right leg where it is. Left hand holds the strap, right arm goes up and twists. Bring the right hand down. Work your left thigh into the block. Swing that right leg out to the side. Open the groin. So the right leg goes to the right. And right hand holds the rope. Even if your leg comes down, try to still push against the strap. Push your thigh into the block. Because even if you're here for balance in yoga, it takes those leg muscles extending and flexing to make sure that you can walk upright and without uh, as much chance or fear of falling. Bring the leg to center. Go ahead, drop it down. Nice. Lay on your back with your legs up a wall. Your hips need to be a couple inches from the wall just so this next pose isn't like the hardest thing ever. Laying on your back with both legs straight up the wall. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh, bending the right knee, cross your right ankle over your left thigh. And then once your right ankle is on top of your left thigh, bend your left knee, sliding your left foot down the wall to stretch the right hip. And you just get to lay there and enjoy the hip stretch for, for a bit. No great rush, no, nothing to go do, just let it be. Go ahead, switch your legs, please. Mm 
Left ankle across the right thigh, bend the right knee, sliding the foot down the wall. All right, stretch both legs up the wall. You can either come away from the wall and lay with your legs out on the floor in Savasana or leave your legs up the wall, but scoot away from the wall so it's not as hamstring intense. In Viparita Kerani. But let your eyes close whether you stretch your legs out on the floor or leave your legs up the wall. So what did you come to create for yourself in your yoga practice? Did you try to use all your senses to make sure that that's what you were doing for yourself during the poses? Because when you don't pay attention, those things that we created to survive will sometimes get in the way. If I'm not being gentle with my body and my movements and being supportive or healing, then I will tend to push really hard. That's what I taught myself to do when I didn't understand something, to push harder. Being aware that Nature abhors a void, so nature will always fill some space. If you don't fill the space of yourself with the awareness of what you're doing for you and how these poses affect you so you can learn from what they're affecting and reflect on it and change, you're giving up your choice to something else because you haven't filled your space with your definitions or clarities or ideas of you, you let someone else do it. So own the space of you, my friends. Let all your senses, even though your eyes are closed, let your eyes be aware of where your eyes are. Direct them towards the point in yourself where you want to be relaxed or healed or happy or strong or whatever it is you want. Do the same with the sound. What sounds does your breath make? With touch, what does the air feel around you? What does it feel like with your clothes? What does the bone and muscle feel like after the work? Even taste. And you know, even though yoga poses may not have a taste, I don't know, I'm not that depth of a student. But is there anything different in all five of those senses? Let that stretch out. Feel the saliva in your mouth. Are you dry? Are you moist? Are you dehydrated? Let all parts turn on to you. So everything you do, you do with a clarity. It's not just intellectual. Or not just one thing or one way of doing it, but all yourself is a part of it. Just as every yoga pose is a pose for the whole body. You take that to the outside world. No, no part of you goes untouched by anything you do. So even though the body's relaxed, let your five senses be just as sharp and rest and enjoy the fruits of your yogic practice.
Slowly increase the depths of your breathing. Begin to awaken the body, opening, closing the hands, pointing, flexing the feet. Bend your knees, roll your body to the side, press your palms into the floor and slowly up you come. Until we meet again, namaste.